I now turn to Professor Srimali Fernando, who is the chairperson of the National Science Foundation of Sri Lanka. Uh, Srimali, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Excellencies, distinguished participants. I congratulate Her Royal Highness Dr. Nisreen El Hashmite, Executive Director of the RISD and Honorable Dr. Helena Daly, Minister of European Affairs and Equality of the Republic of Malta, along with other organizers and co-sponsors of the third International Day of Women and Girls in Science Forum. And thank you for the kind invitation extended to Honorable Susil Premajanta, Minister of Science, Technology and Research in Sri Lanka, to participate. Honorable Minister sends his greetings and regrets his inability to be physically present at this important meeting due to commitments back at home. 70th session of the United Nations General Assembly in 2015 adopted Resolution 70212, proclaiming February 11th each year as the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Its sponsorship by 68 countries with all member states approving, indicates the global interest in transforming our world through achieving equality and parity in science for sustainable development. Excellencies, distinguished guests, my country, Sri Lanka, was the first to introduce universal, for both men and women, adult franchise in 1931. Sri Lanka, which provides a free health service and free education up to undergraduate, undergraduate degree, has made remarkable progress in reaching gender equality, especially in health and education. The people of my country in 1960 elected Madam Sirima Bandaranaike as the first woman prime minister in the world. The third chapter of our constitution, which is on fundamental rights, provides a legal framework against gender discrimination. Despite all this, Sri Lanka ranks 109 out of 144 countries in the 2017 World Gender Report, tabled at the World Economic Forum. Of the four pillars considered for the world ranking, Sri Lanka performs worst in economic participation and opportunity to women, which I shall briefly touch upon. The Labor Force Survey carried out by Sri Lanka's Department of Census and Statistics highlights continued low female labor participation rates at 36% compared with 75% for same aged men despite overall economic growth and poverty reduction over the past decade. This holds true for our research and development labor force, the highly skilled categories as well. Nevertheless, even to date, the female unskilled labor force contributes significantly to economic growth and is a major source of foreign exchange in our country. Although the proportion of women and men that qualify with bachelor's degrees from Sri Lankan universities is more or less equal, there is a sharp drop in women completing postgraduate degrees at master's and doctoral levels, mainly due to social and cultural challenges. The reluctance of women to study and work in engineering and IT fields is also a concern that needs to be addressed with a mindset change by including gender dimensions into STEM or possibly STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics education at all levels. Even women with higher, degree, higher level of education attainments find it increasingly difficult to secure high skills and highly paying jobs with very little opportunity to be involved in decision-making on director boards, boards of management, statutory committees, etc. My institution, the National Science Foundation of Sri Lanka, launched a Women in STEM program last year to holistically address these issues. In this backdrop, 
I recommend this forum through its outcome report to encourage national governments to direct compulsory inclusion of women in each decision-making body, create girl, woman, and family-friendly learning and working environment, both in the government and private sectors, and integrate gender dimensions into STEAM education at all levels. As the world moves towards a knowledge economy, the economic and social activities will be driven by scientific, technological, and innovative capacities of countries and companies. In this new paradigm, the integration of women with enhanced skills into the talent pool is critical. The Global Gender Gap Report 2017 also reveals gender gaps at industry level and in particular highlights that even though qualified women are coming out of education system, many industries are failing to hire, retain, and promote them, losing out on a wealth of capacity. Gender inequality is a pressing global issue with huge ramifications not just for the lives and livelihoods of girls and women, but more so for the human development, national productivity, and GDP growth. A report published in 2015 by McKinsey and Company shows that advancing women's equality can add $12 trillion to the world economy by 2025. Therefore, the gender issues should be addressed not to patronize girls and women, but to empower them to address an imperative need of humanity. I'm sure the deliberations today and tomorrow will highlight this vital dimension of gender and science. And I wish this forum all success. I thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Professor Fernando. It was good to hear uh, your experiences from my part of the world.